So now, shall we please welcome the boxer, Solomon Netty. You don't know what's going on right here. I'm the baddest overseas, yet the local champion Gang, 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 gang Cause I get my swag on Cause I get my swag on Cause I get my swag on Yeah, yeah But get to everybody, yeah Cause give me a boo, get to boo Shall we welcome the boxer Eric Asante? So we are ready for the super featherweight contest over six rounds. Now officials for this bout, we have Judge One, Confidence Yagba, Judge Two, Shadrach Akwe, and Judge Three, me Mensa Akapo. Now introducing the box of fighting out from the blue corner. And this evening is spotted in black and white trunks with blue gloves and black and white shoe to match. This is the man with the weight of 133 pounds. And this is the man from one of the finest boxing gymnasium in Accra and Ghana. Under the tutelage of one of the finest boxing trainers in Africa. And currently the trainer of Black Bombers of Ghana. This is the man with one fight, one defeat. Presenting to you, the boxer, Solomon Nate. Crossing over to the red corner. And is this evening sported in the white and black trunks, red gloves, with blue and white shoe to match. From the Chas Corte Boxing Gymnasium, under the tutelage, one of the finest former Ghanaian heavyweight boxer who is now in charge of CQB Foundation. The boxer with a weight of 133 pounds and he's also making his debut today as a professional boxer. Presenting to you, the boxer, Eric Asante. And the man in charge of this fight is Nathaniel Obain. Well, Jude, we are bracing up for one of the uh, toughest bouts yet on Fight Night 5. It's a super featherweight uh, contest is scheduled for six rounds. And it's Eric Asante who comes in at a heavyweight of 133 pounds against Solomon and Nette. Round take the skills one. 130. Fight gets underway and uh, it's uh, center referee Nat Obing who will usher us through six rounds of boxing at the super featherweight category. Eric Asante 
is in the white trunks. His opponent, Solomon Nettie, in black. Well, two promising boxers in the league. And so, I mean, we have a very good contest to look out for. Well, viewers, as we go through this fight, we bring, definitely will be bringing you up to speed. As uh, what? Solomon and Nettie visits the canvas. Yeah, but he it, obviously will get the mandatory eight count. Exactly. But I'm sure he's good to go. Exactly. Eric Asante with a very lovely hook. And he catches Solomon Nettie on the chin. Sends him straight onto the canvas. And that's a big warning. Well, he will have to stand tall and look sharp. This is his second bout. Lost the first one. And so uh, he's here to make amends. Talking about Solomon Nete. And Solomon Nete trying to rally back with two beautiful combinations. Left hook, right hook. This obviously will be a very, very steady encounter. Both boxers not ready, at least as far as the first round is concerned, to go into any tough exchanges. But a it very catches him another, from another great left hook from Solomon Nete this time round. And nearly sends Asante onto the canvas. A good uppercut from Asante that time round again. Asante seems to be going for the uppercut. Amazing stuff here, Prince. Yeah, well, they, they are being very, very careful about it and very cautious. But uh, at the end of the round, we'll cross over to uh, Cecil Nitek, who has been in both camps. So he will be in a very good position to let us know exactly what the expectations are. But of course, in this first round, it's almost always uh, advisable to size your opponent up. We've seen the, uh, the prowess of Asante as he goes in. He wants to rely on a lot of the hooks. It's an even, even round now. I mean, I've seen Nete try to rally back and he's been doing so well. It's just that, that left hook earlier on from Asante catching him on the chin and straight on the canvas. Nete leading with the left. South Pole style. And so that brings us to the very end of the first round. Let's get into the camp of the two boxers. Cecil, bring us up to speed. Yes, um, Eric Asante is having his first debut as a super featherweight in this particular um, boxing league. He is coming from a camp whereby he has a management looking after him. That was the hook that sent Solomon Nete, who is also coming from the Wisdom Boxing Gym under the tutelage of Dr. Ufori Asari. I mean, Asante should not, should be very, very wary of Solomon Nete. Solomon has ring craft. Although he knows the technique of boxing, he has a very pale shadow of himself. In terms of offensive boxing, it's zero. His defense is equally very, very good. He gives punishment, he takes punishment, but he's able to endure because he's coming from a stable which has great coaches and great trainers but this is going to be very very exciting prince very exciting is what we all expect here at the bukum boxing arena is fight night five of the ongoing deluxe professional boxing league this bout is scheduled for six rounds eric asante representing the charles quarty foundation and uh, his opponent solomon netty from the wisdom uh, boxing gym. It's a very explosive round again. Two boxers using the jabs very well. They try to get the opening, but just look at Asante always looking for the uppercut. Well, eager beavers now as they go into the flurry of uh, the exchanges of blows. Eric Asante will now have to employ the jabs to see whether he can claw back some pride. And it looks like Solomon Nete is gradually getting another, himself warmed up. Another big right hand from Solomon Nete straight into the face of Eric Asante. Again, he catches him on the chin with a left hook. 
and Solomon Ate dominating this particular round. Oh. And Eric Asante trying to see whether he can end the fight as quickly as he can. Oh, Sam Ferocious, powerful right hand. Yeah. Straight to the face of uh, Solomon Nete. But during the way in, Eric Asante gave clear indications. He would want to stop the fight at the end, um, at the end of the uh, last round. But he says when the opportunity comes and he can floor his opponent, he wouldn't say no. He needs to be careful. Solomon Nete growing confidence and increasingly he's becoming very dangerous. And anytime Asante misses on the hook or with, with a jab, he counters and, and it's, it's looking pretty bad dangerous for Asante. Oh! Down he goes. That was a big one. And he went down like a bomb. It is a big punch. Straight, straight right hand. It's a big hand. Very quick one to the face of Solomon Nete. Nete visited the canvas for the second time. What a straight punch. He walked into that punch and Asante delivered a very powerful right hand. Well, Nete is living dangerously at this stage. And after one, two exchanges, he goes in for the uh, clinch. And you need not be told that those are fans of Eric Asante cheering him on. I mean, he seems to have, to have recovered Solomon Nete, but look, Asante with some big punches here. Amazing stuff. Um, Prince, the, it, it clearly tells you the punching power of Eric Asante. He is dominating, but he should know when to finish a bout. The moment you are able to daze your opponent, this happens to be a title bout, you are supposed to finish it. And I couldn't see it in this, because the moment he floored Solomon Nete, he wanted to finish it. But he has to be very, very careful, because Solomon Nete is not a pushover. Irrespective of him going down, he is not a pushover. He can battle himself out. He has come in the uh, professional boxing league before where he was knocked down, but he went to the stipulated six rounds. That is Solomon Nete. The strategy that Eric Asante can use to stop Solomon is by going to the body and then catching him with the overhead right. That is the best. Round That was three. a tough, a very, very tough right hook. The man, uh, taking him straight to the canvas, talking about... Uh, Solomon Nete. It was a bazooka right hand from Eric Asante. Landed straight to the chin. So I'm sure Eric Asante would want to continue from where he left off. And he showed a lot of promise. He keeps his guard up. Almost always on the offensive all the time. It's, it's not done and dusted yet. Solomon Nete seems to always rally back. Eric Asante clearly on the scorecard, uh, on, in the lead in the scorecards of uh, the three judges. And Nete tries to claw back some pride now. What a powerful boxer he is, Eric Asante. I've loved his powerful jabs. Gold scene into the midsection, gold scene with the uppercut, gold scene with a powerful right hand. There he misses again. And his visa is here with us just at the entrance. You can go and have a feel of and his visa. You can even have something funny. Asante goes in for the clinch this time around. Not too comfortable, I think he is, Eric Asante. But would love to open up once again. So viewers, do stay with us. We've got some interesting bouts coming up your way. This one is much more interesting. And uh, you can get yourself a bite from uh, Eddie's Pizza. Yeah, that was a low blow. It was a low blow from okay, Eric Asante. Yeah. Yeah. 
thought the referee was going to give a warning. Yes, I, I, a, a caution, I yeah, should say. Yeah, I thought so. I thought the referee not obeying. Well, no caution goes to Asante. Uh, Asante. This fans are loving it. That's a good shot to the Another head. Another straight right hand from Nete. And any time he doubles up on the jab, he seems to connect perfectly well. He needs to do a lot more of that. There again, he lands the right hook again. He might not have the, those ferocious right hand, but he seems to be managing his, uh, his weight in the ring very well. Nete. Asante trying to keep his opponent at bay with her jabs. Well into the last 10 seconds of the round, both boxers have done enough and they are calling out on uh, security and health workers to enjoy Eddie's Pizza tomorrow. If you are a security or a health worker, 70% off as far as you show your ID card. Enjoy Eddie's Pizza. Both boxers will go at it again, and it's Asante almost always taking the initiative. I mean, it's a, it's a jab of Asante that is doing the magic for him. He has a very big jab. Good exchange of blows. Nete lands one to the face of Asante. Wild miss there from Asante. Not too sure what the technique of uh, Nete is. Obviously, going to be very difficult to determine whether he wants to go for the uh, for for the straight knockout. But Asante just seems to be collecting the points with a jab. There, a wild miss there from Asante. Yeah, he lands himself into trouble against Solomon Nete. Just walked straight into a right hook and nearly sent him on the canvas again. Just look at Asante going for the uppercut. It's working, always landing those uppercut. His timing is, is, is more or less very wrong. Solomon Nete. He knows he's behind. He knows he, he needs to land those powerful punches, but it's not landing. It, his judgment's always late and wrong. It has been really very exciting about between these two boxes. Yeah, and it looks like they're all running out of steam. There was a ferocious uh, opening rounds for uh, these two boxes. But Asante is still taking the fight to his opponent.
And among the two boxers, Asante seems to have the better of the riches. Goes in with the jab very well. Amazing left hook from Asante to end the round. I mean, um, <laughs> these are boxing theatrics. We have it in every spot. And definitely we are seeing it here. I mean, Eric Asante's first David as a pro boxer. He is exhibiting talent that needs somebody who needs to be managed. And he has a management. And for him even to fight like this against Solomon Nete, who this not been his first David, but he has been here before, speak volumes. But I, as I told you, Solomon Nete is not a pushover. He can withstand punches, he can take punishment, but he will endure the whole next round. Irrespective of him going down, he lives to fight on. I think he is fighting because of the gym that he's coming from. Round five. Bout is getting interesting. This is the uh, fifth round. It's scheduled for six. Super featherweight contest. Big right hand from Solomon Nete. Solid right hand. And I'm pretty sure it sends Asante to the canvas. He's going for those big shots again. Solomon Nete. Corner is telling Nete to keep up the pressure. And wherever you may be, this is Ghana boxing at its best. It's a super featherweight contest, and I'm loving it right here. Yeah, both boxers giving their all. And again, I'm not too sure of the technique of uh, Netty. I'm not too sure what he wants to do, what he hopes to achieve. Clearly, Eric Asante seems to be on top of the exchanges, using the jab to a very good advantage. Yeah, it is, but you look at Solomon Nete and what he has done perfectly between the, uh, the rounds is that he's picking his, you know, that, that right moment to throw the right hand. He, he doesn't have a big right hand. Other than that, I'm sure Asante would have visited the canvas on many occasions. But That's there again, he returns that big left hook straight into the face of Solomon Nate. And that is where Nate seems to be getting it wrong. Always walking straight into that hook. And anytime he, Asante catches him on the chin, he goes straight on the canvas. Now, that obviously won't count as a knockdown. And just look at the corner yeah. of uh, Solomon Nete. They are telling him, come on, you can still do exactly, it. Exactly, exactly. You know, and they are telling him to avoid the clinch as he goes through. Oh, that's a big one. Big right, right hand. on the face of Asante. Yeah, big right hand. Asante feels unperturbed. Big right hand from Solomon Nete. Oh. And Asante walks into another straight right exactly. hand. And I'm pretty sure if Solomon Nete has those big punches, I'm pretty sure Asante would have gone or visited the canvas on many occasions. Asante is not boxing. He is joking. Somebody needs to let him know this is never boxing at all. Irrespective of whatever you are doing, just to create fun for people to know, this is your debut. You need to show excellent class and exuberance because under every management, they watch your ability to finish off an opponent. Solomon Nete went down in round two. Every good boxer knows how to finish off his opponent. And that is one key thing. In the featherweight division, when you come to Ghana, and you mentioned the likes of Azuma Nelson, 
everybody knows that this man knows how to finish off boxing. And this is how well people should just know. These things doesn't warrant things. You need to do marvelously well and make sure that you win on every judge's card and fight very well. That propels you to move up the pecking order. But this as a debutant, you need to show class. But he hasn't done that. Second round. This and the final round. So here is the sixth and the last round. Oh, lovely opening there from the Nete. Now taking the fight to his opponent. Is it too little, too late? Well, I guess so. I guess he's trying to rally back. But I'm thinking it will be too late. That he goes into the clinch again. But look, Prince, he's a good boxer, Solomon Nate. All he needs to do is to stop walking into those left hooks and those uppercuts. Well, I'm sure he's trying to stay away from trouble. And so he opens up and then clinches. He opens up and yeah, then Another goes solid the right hand from Solomon Nate straight to the face of Eric Asante. I mean, he throws one, two jabs, one straight hand, and then he goes in for the clinch. That's not good enough from Solomon Nate. One solid. That's a big one there from uh, Very Sanchez. strong, powerful right hand. Yeah, and one thing I've not seen from Solomon Nate is working on the body of Eric Asante. He's not done that. We've not seen that. And Asante seems to have slowed down a little bit. It's not throwing the jabs. It's not throwing the, the left hooks and the uppercut again. It's yeah. Well, strategy seems to be working for him. I mean, after two or three jabs, he goes in for the clinch, avoids the trouble. Yeah, another powerful right hand from Solomon Nante. He seems to be hitting Asante on the field with that straight right hand. But is it powerful enough to send him onto the canvas? I don't think so. What do you think? Split decision? Unanimous? Nah, nah I, I think Asante have done enough. I mean, in the first three rounds, he really, he really showed supremacy. And in, within that three rounds, he sent Solomon Nate onto the canvas twice. Not too sure whether the corner of uh, Solomon Nete are uh, enthused about the uh, the strategy. Uh, I'm thinking it should, it should be a unanimous decision in favor of Asante, not a split decision. Well, we'll get to the official verdict in a minute. But obviously, we are closing out on the end of this bout. And again, who do you think deserves it? For me, I'll say Eric Asante deserves it because... He had two knockdowns coming in round one and round two. And that gives him 10 over 8 over Solomon. And that is where he used, even if it's a split decision or a majority decision, he still needs that kind of work out from Eric Asante because he has done it all. Okay, we'll be crossing over to our ring announcer to give us the official verdict of this bout. We think it's very close to call. But Mohammed Amin Lamte has all the details. Thank you very much. Now we also watch really transpire seconds ago. Shall we put our hands together for the two boxes? Amazing boxing activity. Good boxes gave all their press. It was a dim done affair. We are now waiting for the verdicts. Now, the next bout is Atopashi Boxing Team, Michael Ofre and Peku Ajato of the Seaview Boxing Gymnasium. 
they are going for the lightweight contest of our sixth round. So we are waiting for the verdicts. We are waiting for the verdicts. Yango for Ankara is standing by to have interaction with the vice president of Bime. He is here in Ghana. Yango for Ankara will be having an interview with him just after the verdicts. So we are waiting for the verdicts. Now we have the verdicts. Shall we put hands together for the two boxes? Now, before the verdicts, it's important to acknowledge the presence of Mr. Isaac Tete, the chief executive of TT Brothers. Shall we put our hands together for him, please? Such a wonderful personality. We also have Honorable Tiflos Tete Cha. He's a great Accra NDC general secretary. Shall we put our hands together for him as well? Now, the verdicts. Judge one. Scored about 58 to 56. Judge 2 scored about 57 to 56. Judge 3 scored about 58 to 55. So, by a unanimous point decision, the winner is the boxer. Harry. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, Eric, Eric, Eric Asante. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, how do you feel fighting? Oh, goodness, a good fighter. So, you did well. Well, so what are we looking forward to seeing in you? I'm just going back to train hard. I'm coming another time. That's it. Congratulations. Thank you. Oh my God. Oh my God.